Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, NVIDIA held their CES 2019 keynote and Jensen came out right away and made it very clear they were here to talk about gaming. So to our surprise, they weren't going to spend the bulk of the keynote just banging on about automotive announcements. So yeah, that was kind of nice. That said, Jensen did start with a stroll down memory lane by discussing the evolution of gaming graphics and you guessed it, that led us to ray tracing. After talking about ray tracing for about 10 minutes, uh, we got onto the Turing architecture and then Jensen proceeded to spend about another 10 minutes talking about tensor cores and RT cores like we'd never heard about them before. But I suppose maybe a slightly different audience at CES, but you'd expect that most people are familiar with that kind of stuff now. Anyway, you guys probably are quite familiar with Turing's architecture and tensor cores and RT cores, so I'm just going to skip all that. I'll spare you the details. Jensen then moved on to show us a brand new ray tracing demo. Yeah, another one of those. Uh, wasn't a game, it was just a pure tech demo, and we were reminded a few times that it just works. So I guess Jensen's sticking with that one liner for now. Not sure if he's realized it's become a bit of a joke, internet meme, or maybe he's um, quite happy with that. Anyway, Jensen uh, confirmed a few times that the demo was being rendered in real time. Uh, didn't specify by what, but I can assure you it was something much more substantial than a pair of 2080 Ti's. Uh, we saw more and more demos. They seem to just keep going and going. More talk of ray tracing, how brilliant it is and how it just works and it's awesome and it's beautiful and it's amazing and it's wonderful and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, a lot of the stuff you've probably already heard. Uh, then we saw a Battlefield 5 real-time ray traced demo. Or, well, it's not a demo, it's Battlefield 5 being ray traced but it's something we're very familiar with and it's something we've covered here on the channel a lot. And in their own demos, a lot of the issues that we've talked about, such as noise and stuff in the reflections when you move, Gamers and Nexus has covered that in great detail as well. All that stuff was still present. However, at the end of the demonstration, Jensen claimed that it was running on a single RTX 2060 at over 60 FPS at 1440p. And yeah, that is with ray tracing enabled, despite the fact that the 2060 only has five giga rays per second of RT performance, and that's down 17% from the 2070's 6 giga rays per second. The key to enabling this performance was DLSS. Uh, they were using DXR or ray tracing in conjunction with DLSS, and we sort of caught wind that this was going to be possible in Battlefield 5, uh, but obviously we haven't been able to test it for ourselves yet because they haven't released the patch that enables you to enable DLSS. So this is something Tim will have to do in the future. So anyway, we have to presume that they were upscaling from most likely 1080p, so that's why the performance at 1440p was, well, I suppose what we'd probably expect to see at 1080p uh, using the quality settings that they used. And for the demo, they used the high in-game quality preset, so that's one level below Ultra, which we typically test at, and then they used the medium level DXR quality setting. So still, that's pretty impressive, I think. Uh, obviously, we'll have to wait until we get our hands on it and test out how it really performs and what the image quality is really like and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Tim will probably dig into that. And uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see what Tim comes up with when he looks at DLSS enabled with ray tracing. So it looked okay in their demos, but yeah, I'm very keen for Tim to do his own testing there. Anyway, for now, we know that the RTX 2060 is going to come in at $350 US. That's the MSRP, and that is slightly below the release price of the GTX 1070 back in June of 2016. Uh, I probably should have chose my words a bit better, actually, because I said it's going to come in at $350, and I can't actually uh, ensure that that's going to happen. So, yeah, who knows what it will come in at. The MSRP is $350 US, but it could hit shelves at $400 US as the cheapest option, or $450 US, so we'll just We'll have to wait and see on that one. It also comes with six gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. It's pretty much what we're expecting there. And Jensen noted that it, along with the 2070, will be available in a game bundle. Though it's not it's not really a bundle of games, it's just bundled with a game. Uh, so you have your choice of Battlefield 5, which I believe is already an option for the 2070, but it will now be an option for the 2060. And then those cards will also have the option of Anthem. So that's a game coming out next month. Uh, yeah, so you can choose Battlefield 5 or Anthem, but yeah, just to be clear, it's not both of those titles. Uh, so yeah, the card will be released next week, so the RTX 2060 will be coming next week on January 15th. That's when it'll be hitting shelves or available online. All that good stuff, hopefully for $350 US, but like I said, we'll have to wait and see on that one. 
And I believe at this point reviews will be online a day before. So January 14th for all the reviews. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but I believe that's when that will be. Nvidia didn't really give us much to go on in terms of specs, uh, but they did comment on performance. So I suppose take that with a grain of salt, but they did anyway. Uh, they said that the RTX 2060 is 60% faster than the GTX 1060 in today's games. So that's a pretty massive jump forward. I get that the GTX 1060 is a $250 product and this is a $350 product, but even so, it's still a pretty big jump in performance. The GTX 1070 is around 35 to 40% faster than the GTX 1060. So based on that, we can expect the RTX 2060 to be faster than the 1070, uh, which really wouldn't make it that much slower than the 2080. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Jensen also a little bit later on noted that the RTX 2060 is faster than the GTX 1070 Ti, which it's pretty crazy given that on average the 2070 is just 7% faster than the 1080 uh, in our own test. And there's not really a huge difference there between the 1070 Ti and the 1080. So yeah, I mean, I realize these numbers are coming from Nvidia, but even so it does seem a bit unlikely that the 2060 is going to be uh, that much slower than the 2070. And yeah, if that's true, that will, that'll finally be some good news for gamers as the 2060 will cost about 30% less than the 2070. If I had to guess, reading between the lines, I am expecting the 2060 to come out pretty much neck and neck with the GTX 1070 Ti. I know Jensen said it's faster, but I think it's probably going to be about the same overall. And anyway, if that is the case, then that will be a pretty good outcome for gamers. I mean, relative to what we've been given so far. Uh, just a bit of extra info that I'm going to squeeze in here. After the keynote, Nvidia published the RTX 2060 specs on their website, so we do have some more information about the specs. The GPU features 1920 CUDA cores, uh, clocked it up to 1680 megahertz, and the GDDR6 memory is the same 14 gigabits per second stuff used by the other RTX models. Using a 192-bit wide bus, it has a throughput of 336 gigabytes per second. So this means the 2060 has just 17% fewer CUDA cores than the 2070, but costs 30% less. So sounds like a pretty decent deal to us. Moving on from the RTX 2060, Jensen talked about G-Sync, announcing uh, a G-Sync certified program. Uh, basically, they're now supporting adaptive sync monitors at the driver level. So some adaptive sync monitors are getting G-Sync support. Nvidia said they tested 400 monitors and a dozen of them were awarded the G-Sync spec. And this means that they will get GeForce adaptive sync support via a driver. Actually, also after the keynote, please uh, be aware that we are just piecing this video together uh, pretty much on the fly. So it's not as well structured as it normally is. Anyway, after the keynote, Nvidia also announced on the website that adaptive sync monitors that are yet to be validated as G-Sync compatible, uh, they might still work. A new Nvidia control panel option that will be available in a new driver uh, will allow owners to try and switch the tech on. And they say that it may work, uh, it may partially work, or it might not work at all. So yeah, that's kind of interesting and it kind of backs up the comments that uh, I'm about to talk about that Tim made on our Discord chat with our Patreon members. Tim suggested our Patreon Discord chat. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm kind of calling him out on this one, um, putting it out there more public, but I'm sure he'll get over it. Anyway, Tim said in our private Discord chat that he suspects that NVIDIA, or this is NVIDIA's first step in global support for adaptive sync. Uh, he said that NVIDIA can't just come out and say Adaptive Sync is now good enough uh, because they've been saying that G-Sync's better for years now. Uh, he suspects at some point in the future NVIDIA will say uh, something like, uh, we were able to make all Adaptive Sync monitors good on NVIDIA hardware and now we support every Adaptive Sync monitor. Tim also noted that NVIDIA has technically been doing this for years. It's how they support G-Sync on laptops. So some interesting thoughts here from Tim, even if I have thrown him in the deep end. That said, we have discussed this sort of stuff on the channel in the past and our Q and A's and stuff, and we sort of expect that this would eventually happen. Anyway, moving on, we got into mobile gaming and Nvidia announced the RTX mobile series, and this included at least the RTX 2080 and RTX 2060, but we can presume it also included the RTX 2070. It was claimed that the mobile RTX 2080 is faster than a desktop GTX 1080. And Jensen also announced that there will be a record 40 plus GeForce RTX laptops, 17 of which will be Max-Q models, and they will be available starting January 29th. 
So that brings us to the end of the keynote. Just a single RTX 2060 model was announced and no mention of the, uh, what was it, the GTX 1160 or whatever the rumor was. Uh, it was also rumored that there would be a, I think it was a three gigabyte and four gigabyte version of the GTX 2060, which sp I suppose still could happen. Uh, we didn't really expect that they would just bombard us with a heap of different 2060 models uh, at the initial an announcement. So yeah, those models still could follow uh, down the track with some quiet launches. So obviously we'll keep an eye on that. But at least for now, there is just a six gigabyte 2060. And honestly, I hope it does stay that way. Everything went pretty much as expected, though the 2060 might end up being a bit faster than what we were initially expecting. And if that is the case, well, yeah, that'll certainly be nice. For now though, you will just have to wait till the 14th to see our day one coverage. And for that, we will most likely have Nvidia's FE model along with a few board partner cards from the usual suspects. And that is gonna do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content just like this. Uh, we will have plenty more CES coverage coming. So if you're interested in that, yeah, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell icon thing so you're notified. And yeah, if you wanna support us more directly, you can do so on Patreon. That will grant you access to our Discord chat where you can see bold claims made by Tim and myself. And you can also watch our monthly live streams. Anyway. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.